Hello again everyone, in this part we will be looking at numerical methods for finding the maximum likelihood estimator. In fact, in some situations or in most situations, should I say, uh, we cannot obtain a closed form expression for the MLE and as such we need to use uh, numerical procedures and there are several of them that uh, we can use and possibly the most popular are the newton Repson and its variant the Fisher scoring method, the gradient descent and the EM algorithm that we will start learning next week. And which method is more appropriate is problem dependent and what is common to all of them is that they are iterative. They need as an input an initial value for the parameter or vector of parameters, then they iterate some updating equation and they stop when a convergence criterion that we have specified is met. And fortunately, R has very good optimization tools and we will look in this part at a couple of them. So let us start with the newton Repson. The newton Repson is a method from numerical analysis. It's not uh, specifically tailored to statistical problems or to maximum likelihood estimation in the sense that it was not developed having maximum likelihood estimation in mind. And we will not look at the derivations. Any book that covers maximum likelihood or numerical analysis should um, cover the derivation of the newton Repson in detail. We will just illustrate it and, well, the newton Repson it is based on a first order Taylor approximation of the score function and we are interested in finding the MLE, the theta hat, that is a solution of the score equation, right? That's how we find the maximum likelihood estimators. And the updating equation for the newton repson method is given by this equation here. So basically, I know that the estimated iteration t plus 1 is equal to the estimation at uh, iteration t plus the observed Fisher information evaluated to, sorry, plus the inverse of the um, observed Fisher information evaluated at theta uh, at iteration t times the score function evaluated at theta t. However, it is known that uh, if the, um, our initial estimate is very far away from our maximum, from the MLE, the, the behavior of the observed Fisher information uh, of, the, um, of minus of the second derivative of the likelihood, the log likelihood, will be problematic. And a remedy uh, that has been proposed is to, instead of using the observed Fisher information, use the expected Fisher information. So here in the updating equation of the newton Repson, we just replace the observed Fisher information by the expected Fisher information. Of course, from an, an analytical point of view, it is a little bit of more work because for the expected Fisher information, we need to compute the expectation of the second derivative of the log likelihood minus the second derivative of the log likelihood, but we need to compute the expectation. So we have a further step and sometimes it uh, may not be trivial but okay we know that at least when um, it should be from what we are told in the literature less sensitive to the initial values and this variant where we replace the um, observed Fisher information by the expected Fisher information is known as the Fisher scoring method and to illustrate uh, these two methods and the R optimization tools available, or at least uh, two of them, uh, we will consider the problem of finding the MLE estimator of the Cauchy distribution. And so we suppose that Y1 up to 
YNRIID, independent and identically distributed random variables that follow a Cauchy distribution with a known location theta that uh, belongs to R and that we are considering as a known and we want to estimate based on our data. And we are considering that the scale of the Cauchy distribution is equal to one, so it is known. And under this configuration, the density of the Cauchy distribution takes this form here that I'm highlighting, highlighting sorry. And we can compute the, if we are to find the MLE, we can compute the log likelihood, then uh, find the root of the square equation, so do the derivative of the log likelihood and equate it to zero. And if we do that, we see that we cannot solve uh, this equation with respect to theta. You can try, but if you are able to do that, so something went wrong, okay? So uh, basically in this situation, we use a numerical method. And let's look at the Fisher scoring and uh, the newton Rapson. For that, we need the second derivative, right? Because for the newton Rapson, we need the observed Fisher information. So the minus the second derivative evaluated at the iteration that we are running. And we also need the expected Fisher information. So the second derivative of the log likelihood, it is here. And the expected in Fisher information is a lot of calculations and is out of our purpose here to to derive it i will tell you that is n over um, two and if you want to see um how it is derived i left the link on the pdf file okay so a link to um, a website that has the derivation of the expected feature information for the cauchy distribution and Okay, so let us start. I will first simulate some data. So because I'm simulating the data, I know what is the true value of the parameter that I'm trying to estimate, but just to make the point. So I will simulate from the scale needs to be equal to one, that's what we are assuming. And I'm simulating data from uh, a location parameter equal to zero. And I'm simulating 100 observations. So if I do this, I have simulated the data and now and here I know what is the true value but in one dimensional cases it's never a bad idea to look at the likelihood or the log likelihood to have an idea where the maximum is located this helps us not only in judging the solution that we obtain from our numerical procedure but also um, that can but also uh, this can be helpful um, in order to select an initial value to pass to our functions and if I do this, that's what. And here is my likelihood function. I know that uh, the true value of the parameter theta that I'm trying to estimate the location is zero. And in fact, or and here I have simulated only 100 observations. So my estimate will not be exactly zero, but should be close. And I see that it's kind of very close to zero that I find the maximum of the log likelihood. Okay. And I have here two functions that implement the newton Rapson and the Fisher scoring for this particular example. And they are very simple. There are a lot of, there are lots of room for improvement, but uh, my goal was to come up with something simple that actually works. And so I have called, so let's start with the newton Rapson. I have created a function that takes as input y, the data, theta zero is our any initial estimate and eps it's like the abbreviation of epsilon and is for my stopping criterion and for my stopping criterion i'm using here this criterion that the absolute value of the of the difference between two consecutive um, iterations is smaller than epsilon and i specify epsilon okay and here uh, i'm saving Theta is the parameter that I will be 
using for overwriting my estimates and I'm initiating it to theta zero to the initial value and this variable here diff that I set to that I have set it to one it's just to it's just to for the convergence for the stopping criterion just to control the stopping criterion so any value greater than epsilon will work if it's smaller we stop immediately the algorithm so uh, as long as it's a value greater than the epsilon that we have specified we are okay and so while this difference is greater than epsilon, what I will do is, because I need to compute the difference between the value of the previous iteration and the value of the current iteration, I will um, save the value of the previous iteration in this variable theta old. And here I have the first, um, the, the derivative of the log likelihood, the one that we have um, specified here, then I have the second derivative of the log likelihood, and this is my updating equation for theta. Now, I know that under the newton Rapson here, because it's a scalar, my observed feature information is a scalar, so it's just dividing by the score by the observed feature information, and that's exactly what I have here. And then my difference, I'm actually, what I'm doing is to check the difference between the, the value of this iteration and the value obtained in the previous iteration. And if this is smaller than epsilon, I stop. If not, I keep uh, running my procedure. Okay. And if I do this, and now I will set that I will say that epsilon is this value. So five decimal places or six, one. Three, four, five, six decimal places. It's a very small number at, as it has to be. Okay, and my starting value is one. And if I do this, let me run my. I think I need to run this one. I haven't run it, I guess. Okay, and now I obtain that the value is minus. 0 0.098. Okay, I know that the true value is zero, so I think this seems like uh, a sensible estimate. But if I, for instance, change one at a time, my initial value from one to, let's say, five, it's not that far away, let's say, right? From We even know the true value, so I know that the true value is zero. I'm uh, saying that the starting value to start the iterative procedure is five. Let's see what happens. And we obtained an error and this is due to the convergence. Okay. And we know that from the theory that we have been told that uh, the newton Rapson has problems with the starting value and that uh, when that is the case, the Fisher scoring is a better alternative. And let us code the Fisher scoring is exactly the same, but I'm replacing uh, rather than the second derivative, I'm providing the Fisher information that we know is n over 2 and the rest is exactly the same. So. I will run the function and now I will try. The epsilon is the same for the stopping uh, criterion. And now I'm trying as initial values 15. Remember that for the Newton Rapson, 5 was already problematic. I'm trying 15 and 100. And if I do that, I obtain exactly the estimate so that I had obtained before and the good thing is that the Fisher scoring is uh, no longer sensitive uh, to the initial value and here what I'm doing is plotting the likelihood and the vertical red line is our MLE estimate and everything looks good. Okay so main message uh, Newton Rapson very sensitive to initial values in some cases and in this case it turned out to be sensitive and Fisher scoring less sensitive but it requires more work so no free lunch is correct. Now, and because I've said that R has very good optimization tools and there are plenty of them, let me illustrate two of them. One is the package MaxLeak that is specifically tailored for maximum likelihood problems and uh, 
you need to install the package Max Leak in advance. In advance, sorry. And what the what the function uh, requires us is to pass the log likelihood function um, and a starting value and the data. Here, just to make a note, I forgot to to mention for the log likelihood function i know that for the distribution i'm using the decauchy distribution that stands for the density of the cauchy distribution and uh, is a built-in function in r and if i let log equal to true i'm computing the the density in the log scale and that's what i want right because i know that the likelihood is the product of the densities and then the log likelihood is the sum of the log density and i'm summing and i have the density in the log scale so that's exactly what i need for the log likelihood okay so this was an apart that i forgot uh, to to make at the beginning and okay so for the function what i need to do is to pass the log likelihood and the the starting value and if i do that I obtained this is exactly the estimated the estimated that I have obtained before, and I obtained the standard error point uh, sixteen two five three of my um, estimate. But I have also obtained that from the Newton Repson because in the Newton Repson I have asked for um, for the value of the second derivative what i'm returning is the estimate in the last iteration uh, and the value of the second derivative evaluated at the last iteration and i know that uh, the if i take the symmetric of this value i obtain the observed fissure information okay and i know that the inverse of the observed fissure information is the variance of the mle and so if i take square root of the inverse of this number i obtain the standard error and let me compare so if i take square root of one over this number i obtain 0 0.162 and if I come down it's exactly the same okay so this is the max leak package and we can also use the otim function the otim function is very powerful it has a lot of methods by default it does not do newton reps and i think max leak does a form of gradient descent um optim uh, the default is the elder meet that is an optimization method that does not require the de derivatives is very powerful and i mean for optimization is a tricky business i think at least uh for me is uh, never trivial but the optim is powerful and there are a lot of methods okay and let's try the optim uh, we are passing the log likelihood and this control function here for way which i'm setting fn of scale equal to minus one is because optim by default does minimization and so what i'm doing is i'm minimizing the symmetric uh, the symmetric sorry of uh, my uh, log likelihood so it's equivalent to maximizing the log likelihood and i'm asking for the asian to be equal to two so this will give me the matrix of the second derivatives or the second derivative evaluated at the um, final estimate Okay, and if I do that, let's run it. So first, this first bit, uh, it gives me in it gives me here in the I have called it object MLE optim and dollar par. It gives me the maximum likelihood estimate. Okay, and it gives me the the um, the log likelihood evaluated at the mle and here it's important convergence zero it means that the algorithm has converged and it gives me also this the in this case the matrix of second derivatives because we only have one parameter this is exactly what we have obtained in our newton repson function correct and uh, but here for the first bit it is complaining and it says one dimensional optimization by Nelder Meet is unreliable. And uh, there is um, another function that R has that 
it's only valid for optimizations, optimization problems involving one parameter, and it's the optimize and that corresponds to method equal to brand. And when we use this method, we also need to provide a lower and upper bound, not only an initial, val an, an, an initial value, sorry, but a lower and upper bound for the parameter. And by doing this, the I got exactly the same estimates, but the, the optim does not complain, let's say. Okay, so optim function and max leak, they both uh, do the work for us and they are very powerful. So I recommend that you use these in general rather than coding your own functions that it's a lot of work. I'm a, a defense, I defend doing everything by ourselves, but for optimizations, I think that it's very difficult to beat uh, the team. So I suggest a team or max leak. And now let us look at a problem that involves two parameters and I have uh, picked up the Weibull distribution. So it has two parameters. Um, a shape alpha is the shape parameter and beta is a scale parameter. And I'm saying that theta is the vector formed by the shape and scale parameters by alpha and uh, beta. And the Weibull distribution is very used in survival analysis because it's defined on the on the positive, so it's a natural candidate to model uh, lifetimes. And if we compute the log likelihood, that's what we obtained. And then um, the score equations are given by this. And by looking at this, I don't have any hope that I can do it analytically. So let's use here. I will. It's possible to code our own functions, but let's use maxlick and dotim. And again, what I need, I will simulate data again. So I know that alpha is three and beta is two. So I will run um, this part here and I have defined again my log likelihood and the same trick uh, the viable distribution is also um, predefined or is a built-in built function of R and I'm asking it to be evaluating evaluated sorry in the log scale I do the sum and I have the log likelihood I will run this part and now again for the um, log likelihood for the max loop function, sorry, I pass the log likelihood, the data and starting values, I have picked up these two. And if I do this, what I obtain is 3.2 and 1.99. And I know that the true values are three and two, and I can do the same and I obtain the standard errors. And I can do the same here. Um, the functions they give, they gave some warnings, but they returned the, um, the correct estimates, but again, optimization is a tricky business. We do not want to go here. It's not the goal to go in all the details. There are a course that maybe some of you are doing that. Uh, there is a course, sorry, that some of you are doing possibly fundamentals of optimization where you should learn all of this stuff possibly, but it's not my business here. But uh, let's use now the optim. And here I see that convergence zero, so good. It has converged. And here I have my matrix of um, second derivatives evaluated at the estimates or at the last iteration, our estimate that is returned by the function. And I know that I can compute the standard errors. I know that what I need to do is to take the symmetric of this one to take the inverse. So using the comment solve, that's what I have done here. I've taken the symmetric. I'm I'm trying to compute the observed, the inverse of the observed feature information that I know it gives me the variance covariance matrix of the MLE. And then if I take square roots, I obtained the standard errors. And if I do this, that's what I obtain. And if I compare the values in the diagonal, this is the standard error for alpha and for beta. So 0 0.11 and 0 0.03. And if I compare, this is exactly what the max leak uh, function it's, is giving us. Okay, so it was basically everything for this part. We will have the opportunity of practice this more in workshop three and four. Okay, see you in the next and last video. Thank you.